Hello everyone, welcome back to another post-production tutorial. In today's quick tip video, we're gonna be jumping into the power windows and relighting this shot. There's a lot of shapes that we can use. And in this particular example, we wanna really draw the eye towards this building here. A quick mention about the color management in the scene. You can see that we have two nodes in our node editor, color space transform in and a color space transform out. We're converting this from Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log 2 into DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Wide Gamut out into Rick 709. So that's what we're looking at here. If we go to our project settings, you can see that our timeline color space is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut and our output color space is set to Rick 709. So that's the color management of our project, nice and easy. If I go ahead and create a new node with Alt S, I'm gonna label this balance. Let's just really quickly dial in some contrast. Adjust our pivot down a touch to open up those shadows. Gonna add some saturation in. With my temperature and tint controls, just add a really small amount of blue here and a couple points of purple. And if we hit Control D to bypass, that's before, that's after. Looking pretty good. Going full screen here, let's identify where we can use power windows to enhance the lighting of this shot. And the first thing I notice is that there seems to be a little bit of camera lens vignetting coming in naturally here. So on the right hand side and on the left hand side, especially just in general, the sky seems to be a bit dark. So we can use a shape to isolate that. We can use a shape to isolate this vignetting. The other nice to have shape that we could add, something to draw the eye towards this house. Jumping out of full screen, let's add some power windows. And we'll start off with the sky. Now I'm going to actually create a parallel node structure here, um, just so that all of these different shapes blend nicely with one another. So I'm going to hit Alt P to create a parallel node, and we'll call this the anti vignette. I'm going to hit Alt P to create my final node here, and we'll call this bottom gradient. I'm going to right click in the node editor, clean up node graph. Okay, so starting off with our sky, I'm going to select our node here, jump down to the power window palette, and create ourselves a gradient. Now in the top left hand corner here, there's highlight mode. I'm going to toggle that on and select my shape and drag this arrow out. Using the mouse wheel to zoom out and the middle mouse wheel to reposition, I'm just going to go ahead and reposition my shape like that. Up on the top left hand corner of the source viewer, I can select this and just hit fit to screen, which is shortcut key Z. And using shift H to exit out of highlight mode. Now I've done that, I can jump down to my gain and just having a look at our parade scopes while I do this, I'm just going to increase my gain. And I might increase my gamma just a touch as well. And just reposition my gradient. Might lower the gain just a touch. Okay, so hitting Control D just with that. You can already see that really opens up this image. Um, it felt a bit top heavy before. Now it's feeling nice and light and bright. To really sell this effect, I might just go into the gain wheel here and just drag it slightly towards blue, just to really make that saturation pop. And that's looking good. As you may have noticed, this shot has quite a large tilt down. So what we wanna do is we wanna track this shape. Um, if anyone's ever tried to track a gradient shape, they don't do very well with the automatic tracking that Resolve offers, the Cloud Tracker. So um, you could go into interactive mode and you know select um, another part of the frame. But what I like to do, it's a bit easier, is if you jump down to the Cloud Tracker and change it to the Point Tracker. This will allow us to create a tracker point or delete tracker points. I just wanna add one here. Now you may be thinking nothing's happened, but if we scroll all the way in with the mouse wheel, you can see when we did that, we created a track point. And what I can do is I can just click and drag this to a point in the image where I want it to track. So that little window is a good start. And now I've got that selected, I can go ahead and track forward and reverse. And you can see that that tracked that gradient nice and simple. Perfect, moving on to the anti-vignette, I'm gonna go ahead to the power window palette and this time just add a circle shape. Zoom out here and just broadly position the circle. And over here in the softness sub panel, just increase that softness. Making sure to click invert. Let's go ahead to our gamma and just lift up the gamma here. 
Now, if you want to get rid of the power window outline while you do this, uh, the shortcut key is shift tilde. And as you can see, that disables our on-screen controls. And now I can just adjust this gamma up and down and really get a gauge of where best this fits. Increasing the gamma by 0.5, if I just control D that, that's looking pretty good. And I'm just gonna increase the softness just a touch as well. I might just lower the gamma by a couple of points. Nice and subtle here. Cool. And then playing through the shot. We might also just add a touch of contrast. We don't want those edges getting washed out. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, uh, but we really wanna draw the eye towards this uh, mansion here in the foreground. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select my last node. I was initially gonna create a gradient, but I might just relabel this to curves. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab the curve tool. And what I really wanna do is just select some of this um, less interesting stuff that's going on here. So this car park in particular, maybe a little bit of the road. Um, I'm just gonna create something which is kind of nice and broad. Cool, and I'm going over to the outside softness and I'm just gonna ramp that up quite a lot. Might drag it down a little. Now again, I'm gonna use my trick shift tilde to hide the power window outline. And then I'm just gonna, with my gain, I'm just gonna drag that down. Bit of gamma as well, just decreasing that overall. And you know what, uh, hitting shift tilde to reactivate my shape, I'm just gonna shift click and drag this over. Adding another control point here and just pushing this in. Creating a bit of a dynamic shape here. Again, increasing the contrast just a touch. And lowering the gamma just a touch as well. Okay, now if we go to our tracker and just make sure to track this through the shot. And I'm just gonna hit the qualifier to get rid of my shape. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Hitting Control D before and after. And again, we can probably even just move this down just a touch. Now I've got three shapes here, this is great. But if we wanted to add a last touch, I'm gonna add my final parallel node. I'm gonna call this circle. Go ahead, I'll create one more circle shape. Just transform the size down a little, make that nice and soft. And go ahead and just up the gain just a little. That's before, that's after. Of course, we need to track it through the shot as well. So if we go ahead and just select all of this parallel node structure here and create a compound node, this will allow us to control D all of our shape adjustments to see our relighting effect. So this was our initial shot after our balance grade. And this is our completed shot with our relighting effects in place. And that's our tutorial for today, everyone. Uh, definitely keep an eye out, especially on landscape shots with wide lenses. Uh, lens vignetting um, is quite common. Um, and especially on skies, it can really dim them down. So if you're working with footage uh, that has a big expanse of sky, just take a look and see if there's a gradient in there that you can maybe balance out or brighten up. Um, it really helps lighten the shot and helps it breathe a little. If you enjoyed that video, hit that like button, subscribe and comment below uh, if you found it helpful. See you in the next video. Cheers.